Okay, that comes to $790. 800 bucks? As prices continue to rise, saving money anywhere you can has become a crucial part of everyday life. So, let's explore 10 tips for keeping food costs low as inflation rises. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Plan ahead. <laughs> what a list. What a beautiful Costco shopping list. Planning your weekly meals around sale products is a terrific method to save cash on your groceries. The weekly sale products will be advertised in shop ads. So will items that may be used as the primary ingredient in meals. One wonderful idea for eating healthy all year is to plan ahead. If chicken is on sale this week, for example, you may plan a few meals using chicken as the main dish. To save time, you might cook the chicken once, then reheat and prepare it for many other meals. For a variety of dishes, you may use the chicken to create tacos, barbecued chicken, or even chicken soup. Do you guys have any chicken nuggets? On the weekends, some people have massive success prepping meals for the week ahead. You can prepare veggies, cereals, and meat for lunch and dinner meals for a few days. This is a fantastic method to save both time and money, especially when eating out has become so expensive. Also, subscribing to consumer discount cards offered by supermarkets, pharmacies, and other shops is a great trick. They provide significant long-term savings and also qualify you for several unadvertised promos and coupons. However, be certain that your personal information is kept confidential. Check your favorite store's website once a week to compare prices, search for sales, and print electronic coupons. Some chains will send you sales alerts via email. When you head to the grocery store, it's key to be aware of what you already have and what you need. Take inventory of your present groceries before building your list. Make a list of what you're missing and what you'll need for next meals, snacks, and lunches. Farmer's markets should also be added to your shopping list. What are you doing to Dad? What? I'm going to the grocery store. Okay, you remember Memento? Buying fruits and vegetables in season keeps prices down, provides variety, and keeps things fresh. During the summer, you may want to pack an enclosed cooler in your car to carry dairy and frozen goods from the store to your home to ensure everything stays as fresh as possible. Buy frozen fruits and veggies. You want to talk about a supply and demand problem? I sell ice for a living. Ooh, that's a rough business to be in right now. When fresh food is expensive, out of season, or your selections are restricted, frozen fruits and vegetables are a terrific option. Frozen food is typically cheaper and often on sale. It's an ideal item to stock up. Frozen fruits and veggies are just as healthy as fresh fruits and vegetables, if not healthier. To live a long, healthy life, you should eat of the fruits and the vegetables. They're frozen while they're at their best, so they're packed with nutrients. These frozen choices are extremely time-saving because they don't require any cleaning, peeling, or chopping. You may use a small amount or a large amount, and they don't spoil as quickly as fresh food. Frozen fruits and veggies go well in oatmeal, smoothies, or as flavorings, and they can make a quick and flavorful side dish. Fresh organic food is expensive and can be a deterrent for buyers on a budget. Frozen fruits and vegetables are a much more cost-effective solution. According to experts, there are no nutritional drawbacks to frozen food. Also, frozen fruit is more often than not the superior option since it avoids food waste. Frozen berries and bean sprouts, for example, can be kept in the freezer for up to a year. If you keep fresh produce in the fridge for more than a week, you'll end up with rotten berries and wheat green beans you'll be forced to throw away. Cut out processed foods. Oh, I'd rather be hit by dehydrated fruit than a processed <laughs> processed food. Although processed and packaged meals are convenient and appear to be affordable, they contain relatively few nutrients necessary for optimum health. The trouble with these foods is that they're typically low in fiber and protein, two nutrients that help us stay full. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, yogurt, and whole grains can be used to replace packaged and processed meals. The nutrients will help you stay fuller for longer while providing several health advantages. Workout, plenty of rest, you know, eat your green vegetables. For decades, nutritionists, dietitians, and medical experts have been warning about the dangers of processed meals. These experts advise that processed meals that have been considerably altered by processing and the addition of chemical substances be consumed in moderation. Ultra-processed meals are devoid of important vitamins and minerals, and they can also be harmful to one's health. They've been connected to a rise in obesity, a higher risk of cancer, and a higher chance of chronic illness. 
To be healthy and save money, though, you don't have to completely avoid processed foods. A smart place to start is gradually adding more whole foods and vegetables to your diet. Load up on cheap essentials. Look at these diapers. <gasps> Look how cheap they are. Oh, you know what we should do? We should get enough for like the next year or two, right? When some goods are on sale, they're easy to stock up on and may help you prepare nutritious and quick meals. Canned, dry, packaged, or frozen foods have a long shelf life and are ideal for a quick and healthy snack or dinner. Cottage cheese, eggs, beans, both canned and dried, yogurt, quinoa, brown and white rice, frozen veggies, canned tuna, and canned fruit are all inexpensive and nutritious choices. To make a quick and healthy supper, keep these in your cupboard, refrigerator, or freezer. Is it true, however, that buying in bulk can save you money? Yes, it is. However, it all depends on the item you're purchasing. You could imagine that such little sums of money won't amount to much, but you'd be surprised just how much they add up to. Let's take a look at how much money you could save if you switched things up and started shopping in bulk for just three goods. Okay. Assume you and your partner consume four cups of coffee each day. If you buy coffee in bulk, you'll save $16 each year. And if you both have yogurt as a snack at work every day, buying it in bulk would save you $214 over the course of a year. Furthermore, throwing protein bars into your children's lunch boxes every day while purchasing in bulk would save you $178 a year. Now pull out your calculator and get excited. That's a savings of more than $400 each year with just three items. Stick to your list. I'm gonna go buy you some time. Stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. Have you ever worked your rear off to save and pinch every penny you could to stay under your food budget one month only to blow it the next? To be honest, sticking to a shopping budget might be difficult at first, and you may feel as if you're losing out on all your favorite items while the rest of the world has their cake and eats it too. Let's just say I spend a thousand, but let's not tell anybody. After a few months, it will get easier though. When it's time to compile a list, only do so after studying the weekly grocery store advertisements and determining what things are missing from your pantry, freezer, and refrigerator. You may also divide your shopping list into categories based on cuisine or store layout. Try to stick to your shopping list unless you come across things that are a fantastic deal. You may save time and money at the supermarket if you stick to your shopping list. You're more likely to spend more money at the store if you spend a longer time there. Use apps to get cash back. I was hanging on to these gift cards as investments, but then half the companies went out of business. According to experts, Ibotta and Checkout51 are just two of the most popular applications for getting cash back at the shop. The typical user gets between $10 and $20 per month, while more active users can earn up to as much as $100 to $300 per month using these apps. Online coupon websites and apps also offer great deals for everyday essentials. If you've already finished your shopping, use an app like Fetch Rewards to take images of your grocery receipts and earn points that can be used to acquire free gift cards at places like Target or Walmart, as well as to offset future food expenditures. Generic brands are your friends. Knickers? What's the Knickers? It's the same as a Snicker bar, but it's a lot cheaper. Since their inception in the late 1970s, generic brands have come quite a long way. What was previously a basic black and white box of cornflakes has been transformed into a vibrant spread that resembles its real deal name brand relative. And with major retailers such as Target, Kroger, and Aldi all having their own store brands, you may not realize you're not buying name brand things. More Americans appear to be leaving name brand items in lieu of generic ones. Let's say a bag of chips or mac and cheese. Are you totally cool with the store brand? Every time. Whether it's because of the new style or the belief that generic brands would save them money. Everyone is seeking ways to save money on groceries after the pandemic made prices rise. With food prices rising roughly 9% year over year, it's the best time to stop buying name brands. Generic products are frequently far less expensive than their premium equivalents and are just as great. It should be a simple switch if you don't have a preference, but if you do, test a few generic versions at a time and see if there are any you wouldn't mind moving to. I like the hamburgers where we usually have hamburgers. You can't make the assumption that I like the hamburgers here. 
Maybe you'll find some new goods that you like that are less expensive in the process. Did you know that some generic and name brand products have the same ingredients and are even manufactured in the same factory? That implies they are essentially the same product but with slightly different packaging. If you're still concerned that buying generic would lower the quality of your meal, consider the following. Many chefs admit to buying generic versions of common ingredients like salt, sugar, and baking soda. And if it's good enough for pro chefs, why wouldn't it be good enough for you? Have a strategy where you shop. Are you Greg? Your wife sent me. You're supposed to be getting chicken nuggets and milk. When it comes to the remainder of your list, you may save even more money by shopping at a wholesale store. Joining a wholesale club like Costco or BJ's will typically provide you the greatest per unit pricing on things you may hoard. Sometimes it feels like you just use me for my Costco membership. What? Once you've purchased all your bulk items, keep your pantry orderly with food closer to expiry in front so you know to prepare or consume it before it spoils. You may also utilize a site like cooklist.com to create new recipes that use materials you already have on hand. Don't go shopping when you're hungry. I don't, I don't like this. Yes, the flavor. But it's free, so I will continue to chew. We may probably all recall a hungry trip to the grocery store. You're more inclined to buy stuff you wouldn't typically buy when you're hungry. You may be tempted to consume a lot of snack foods and unhealthy fast food. I don't think I'll ever go home. Mm. You know what I mean? Eating a snack or lunch before going to the grocery store is a wonderful strategy to avoid this. Stick to your list and prevent impulse purchases by having a healthy and filling meal before you leave for your shopping trip. Your wallet will thank you. Always check unit price. That's 49 cents of spilt milk dripping all over my table. In supermarkets, unit pricing displays not just the cost of a product, but also its value as a cost per standardized unit of measurement on display labels for goods. When shopping for groceries, unit pricing makes it simple to compare, contrast, and save. When marketing packaged food and other grocery items, including bread, eggs, fruit and vegetables, and toilet paper, large grocery shops and some online grocery sellers are required to show the unit pricing. Packaged groceries are frequently sold by weight, while liquids are frequently sold by volume. How much does a gram of steak go for? I don't know. Why would I be selling grams of steak? Fair enough. For example, a 2 kilogram box of rice with a price per unit of 24 cents per 100 grams may be found for $4.80. Compare that to a rival brand, which sells a package of 1 kilogram of rice for $3 with a unit price of 30 cents per 100 grams. You can now decide which choice is the most cost effective and best meets your requirements. Each product's unit price is a price per unit of measurement. It can be found on a little tag on the grocery shelf. This is an excellent method to compare identical things of various sizes or different brands. Many of us overlook the unit price in favor of the whole price, yet this is a useful comparison tool. For example, you could come across whole grain pasta in a variety of sizes and want to go with the cheapest choice. The unit pricing will break it down for you, and you can then choose the most cost-effective alternative.